Hello, welcome and good evening. And today I'm doing again the nice silent night trick with the piezo. But we have something different now. Um, for the last two or three years I've had this little computer lying around. It's an Onion Omega 2 Plus. This was originally a Kickstarter and it's a tiny system on a chip, basically again with Wi-Fi, no displays or anything, but a lot of GPIO pins. Basically it was supposed to be cheaper than the Raspberry Pi, a bit more stylish, uh, nice web frontends and stuff like that. And um, well, I tried it out and I couldn't get much to work with it because most of the um, outputs here and the SPI interface, the pulse width, was all done in software. So I tossed this aside for the last couple of years and I rediscovered it because I, um, I read a couple of months back that they introduced hardware support for the pulse width stuff and uh, SPI. So maybe I'll revisit it. Um, so what is this thing? Um, I have two here. One is already set up for the piezo. Um, the actual computer is basically this thing sitting on top. This is the actual Omega, Omega uh, 2 Plus. Uh, the 2 Plus has a micro SD slot, which is a bit tedious to set up. It's not used um, directly for the root file system. You have to trick a bit. And yeah, other than that, it has a MIPS processor, 64 megabytes of RAM, I think. Was it 60 megabytes of flash? Well, I'll link to the product anyway. And you definitely need one of the expansions, like this here, for example. This is similar to the Raspberry Pi. You can put some hats on here, or LED hat and stuff like that. It also has USB interface, a reset button, and an on-off switch. And it's powered by standard micro USB lead here. That's all good and fine. Um, these things are a bit cheaper than the Pies were, but however, the Raspberry Pi Zero is already pretty cheap. So, nowadays, I would rather say get a Raspberry Pi because the software support and the community support is so much bigger with this. The Omega 2 is still kind of a niche product. Um, I think, in quantities, or if you don't need the expansion when you deploy this thing, um, you can actually get it cheaper. Uh, and also a pretty powerful solution compared to the Raspberry but for the average maker I would say the Raspberry is probably the best choice at the moment. So this thing here is uh, the breadboard extension. You can simply plug that whole thing into a breadboard but I just put the uh, wires directly here to the pin headers and on the other side we get the labels here. So I'm using pin 18. Pin 18 and pin 19 are the pulse width outputs. That's in the documentation. I'll link to that. And we need a ground cable as usual. The whole thing is only and really only accessible via Wi-Fi. It will connect to your Wi-Fi or open its own Wi-Fi if it can't find any. And you don't have any HDMI or anything. So this is basically a tiny headless device. Alright, so let's take a look at the software and also play it. Okay, so when you log into the Omega you get, well, a root prompt. It doesn't know about any users or anything. You always work as root, so be careful what you're doing here. You can do everything that root can. And we need uh, not much installed. The Linux on here is much more lightweight than Raspbian. Use the OPKG package manager, which you maybe know from the open WRT router project. And you basically have to call OPKG update on it. And then it will fetch all the available packages and you will need to install Python. OPKG install Python. However, it will probably say that I already have everything up to date. 
which is good um, because that's just what we need and to be able to use the hardware pulls with modulation you have to set the GPIO pins to actually expose the pulls with interface because this thing has so many functions that a lot of the pins are multiplexed or overloaded so you can call the Omega 2 control program and tell it to GPIO max and then set PWM0 to actual pulse width mode. Um, you can call that and it says yeah I'm doing that and if your program crashes and you get annoying sounds all the time there's the onion script uh, which can access the hardware directly from the bash prompt and yeah you can basically call this command pwm channel zero disable to stop the annoying sounds so let's take a look at the code basically vanilla python the only thing that we need to import is the sleep function and then there's a bunch of uh, files that we need to access so the whole pulse width chip interface is exported via um, files so we can also do that here uh, another very weird bug um, first line always disappears so basically we can do an ls on this class pwm and we'll see there's one pwm chip on here and the most important things are the files export and unexport so they are writable and whenever you write a one to either of them it will either create and export um, device files for uh, control of that function or it will hide those so basically um, if you do export those functions you get three extra files period duty and enable period is basically the frequency duty cycle is the usual how long is the time that it stays on and for the sounds we want 50 percent and enable string says if it should start uh, outputting something put a one in there and will start beeping and put a zero in there and will stop so um, the actual enabling disabling functions are a bit more complicated than on the raspberry pi we compute the period as one over frequency times uh, what is it one billion the pulse width is period times duty divided by 100 and then we cast that to integers to make it nice and writable to the files and then we open the export file write a, the channel number in there that should be exported and we have two channels zero and one we will use zero here then we write the period to the period file the duty cycle the enable and then we unexport everything this is probably not necessary i think it will also start working without that um, and you can unexport at the end but it doesn't cost much and then when we want to turn off a node we disable the pulse with channel just by writing to the enable file again with the zero instead the rest of the code looks very much like the c version that you already know from the last video so here are the notes this time in a uh, Python dictionary which is a bit nicer than what we had before with the defines so yeah, there's the three octaves and you can just use the node as an index the beep function is also pretty simple if the node is a special key pause then we just pause and return otherwise we set uh, the PWM channel to beep with 50% duty cycle and we pick the node from the nodes dictionary and that gives us the frequency and then we sleep for the duration of the node then we disable the node and wait 20 milliseconds again so that the uh, nodes doesn't don't clump together the song itself is just a python uh, array of tuples and the tuples have the node as a string and the duration in milliseconds so that's basically it and the last thing is just a simple map call to a lambda function that unpacks the tuple and sends it off to the beep 
function to play the beep and map uses the song container. That's all. So this is basically the play function here. And when we do that, we get the following. Let me start recording so that you can actually hear it a bit louder over my background noise. Okay, let's see if I can make it work. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so that was all I wanted to show to you today. It is reasonably easy to do the same thing on the Raspberry and on the Onion. However, I still think um, the community support currently for the Raspberry is better, but you should definitely check out the Omega if you need a smaller footprint device that probably also consumes less uh, power and has a really wide variety of inputs like the SPI interface. I think I2C is also on there and um, especially if you want something that is headless and uh, well yeah still has Wi-Fi on board. There's a lot of different devices out there nowadays but the more options the better I guess and I think there's also a Omega 2 Pro now on Kickstarter, which has even more memory and more power. So make sure to check that out as well. Other than that, please share, like, and subscribe, and see you next time.